Hello and welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and today we're talking about how best to parent your Sagittarius child when you're a Capricorn mom or a Capricorn dad. So before we get into it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to get your free regular Positive Parenting with Astrology content. And stay tuned at the end of this video, I have a big special announcement for you guys. Uh, so um, hang in there. All right, are you the parent of a Sagittarius child and do you happen to be a Capricorn? Would you like to know what your SAG child is all about? Would you like to be able to handle their big emotions a little bit better? Do you wanna know what makes them tick? Do you wanna know how to be a better parent to them? How to understand them better as a Capricorn? Well, if that's the case, then this video is for you. We're gonna start out by doing an overview of Capricorn energy, then Sagittarian energy, and then we're gonna talk about how those two energies relate. The dynamic, kind of what usually tends to happen in the dynamic of the relationship, and how you as a parent can understand your Sag Sagittarian child better in order to have the best, strongest relationship possible with them. So Capricorn, if you've seen my videos on Capricorn kids, a lot of this information will be familiar to you. Capricorn is a cardinal earth sign. It is a feminine energy sign. So cardinal means it is intent on advancement. It is intent on moving forward. It's always got this kind of impetus behind it. Like Cap Capricorns, like other cardinal signs are kind of self-motivating. They don't really need a lot of external pressure to get motivated. Sometimes they do, sometimes we all do but it's a very self-motivating energy, kind of a get up and go energy. So it's intent on forward momentum, advancement, improvement, achievement. It is also a sign that is ruled by Saturn. So it needs a lot of structure, okay? It's not a kind of loosey goosey, fly by the seat of your pants type energy. It is an energy that craves and does best with structure and predictability. It is a feminine energy sign. Now on the spectrum of the feminine energy signs, which are the earth signs and the water signs, arguably Capricorn is the least feminine of the feminine energy signs. Some debate about that, but if you think about like the water signs versus the earth signs, Capricorn probably exhibits not as, not as an intense kind of feminine energy as the water signs. So what do we mean when we say it's a feminine energy sign? It can be more of a passive sign, although the cardinal um, modality kind of makes it more active and gives it a lot of like, you know, this self-motivating forward momentum, but it is a sign that is very calculating. It is, it is not a sign, it is not an energy which thinks or which acts before thinking. That, those are the fire signs, so we'll get to how Sagittarian kind of exemplifies that, that dynamic, but Capricorn is a calculating energy it's an energy that weighs all options before making decisions. It is not as impulsive as air signs and fire signs. So that's what we mean when we say it can be more of a feminine energy sign. It's also being an earth sign, uh, it can be more intuitive. And interestingly, being an earth sign, it's also resource oriented. And we'll get into that in a little bit more detail here in a few. But Capricorn likes to plan for the future and it's not comfortable being forced to make decisions impulsively without a lot of thought. And it doesn't really understand that dynamic. It's it's very tough for Capricorn to deal with a dynamic kind of um, which fire fire people do, which is they kind of shoot from the hip. They, they take action before thinking things through and they are not the best at thinking about consequences and possible consequences from their actions, they just act. But Capricorn thinks, plots, and calculates before it acts. So Cap and Sag energy are very different. So you as the Capricorn parent are likely gonna have a more challenging time understanding the Sagittarian nature of your child, unless you have a lot of fire energy in your chart, right? This is not gonna be an energy that comes naturally to you. You're going to have to really uh, make an effort to get a handle on it, but that is possible. Again, Cap likes to have a stable environment, likes to have control over its environment. Now, when the Capricorn, the parent is the Capricorn, that can kind of uh, tend to be expressed as more of a domineering, controlling nature. Sagittarian kids do not do well when they feel too controlled. They need freedom. We'll talk about that in a bit. They don't value structure as much as Capricorn people. So you're going to have to remember that about your Sag child. Capricorn is also more of a serious energy. Again, when the parent is the cat, it becomes 
you know, very serious when relating to the child, right? And the Sag child uh, likes to have freedom and also likes to enjoy life. They like to experience life. They don't like to think too much about all the responsibilities, the day-to-day -day monotony they have to do. They really don't thrive in that environment. Sagittarian people are compelled to figure kind of life out and study life philosophies, these kind of larger aspects. They don't like to get too down in the weeds, especially with the day-to-day -day responsibilities. They like to think about the big picture, philosophical concepts and ideas about life, and they like to enjoy everything life has to offer. And interestingly, Capricorn can be more of a loner, solitary energy. That doesn't mean that Capricorn people don't have friends and don't like to socialize and things like this. But the fire signs, especially Sag, usually kind of have an entourage about them. They're very social and they like a lot of external validation. So that is a difference uh, you're going to have to think about. So remember the onus, the responsibility is on you, the parent, for the health of the relationship with your child, right? Your child just doesn't have all the tools yet to deal with the relationship, to learn to interact, to learn how to have a healthy relationship. That is where the parent comes in. That is the parent's job to teach the child that. Okay, now we're going to talk about Sagittarian energy. Sag is a fire sign. It's a masculine energy sign. It's very much a doing energy. It's very impulsive. As we said, they like to uh, act first without thinking and they'll deal with the consequences kind of on the back end. So it is a mutable sign. Mutable modality, which means that it can waffle between cardinal and fixed modalities. It is very common in my experience to see kind of Sag play out the extremes of that mutable modality. Be very fixed. Some people would call it lazy, right? Or lacking motivation. And then be very, you know, go to the other extreme and be cardinal and just be ha you know, characterized by this frenetic activity where they just cannot sit still, cannot slow down. It is very common to see those two dynamics kind of extreme dynamics play out so if that's the case with your sag child that is normal and you're going to have to make sure that when they have those periods of frenetic activity that they have some kind of outlet for the activity whether it's mental stimulation they need or physical stimulation or this release of physical energy you're going to have to you know figure out ways for them to release that energy fire energy people in general have a lot of physical energy needs so they're going to have to do sports or hiking or some find some way of kind of releasing that need for physical energy or they risk uh you know having it pented up and then that can become too destructive if it's not released appropriately so if capricorn is ruled by saturn which is the planet of restriction and structure and remember just a quick side note here restriction is not always a bad thing sometimes when our choices are more limited right? And things don't pan out. That actually helps us focus a little bit better on the things that are available to us. So that's kind of the gift of Saturn that astrologers are always talking about. In relation to that, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, which is the, you know, we call it a benefic planet. It's the planet of abundance, can be of excess. Kind of the negative side of that is it can make the chart holder appear to be lazy or lacking in motivation, okay? But it also kind of gives this energy of abundance like this kind of and this can be very uh helpful to a sagittarian person because it can kind of impart to them this abundance mindset and this optimistic outlook on life and if you have sagittarian people in your life you will know that one of the redeeming qualities is this overly optimistic outlook on life that when things are going badly for them right even very badly they're able to maintain optimism right and they're able to kind of look ahead and think, well, things will get better. Or I still think the life has things to offer me, even though things in other areas are not working out right now. My point is that it's an energy that tends to be very optimistic, whereas Cap can be kind of more realistic and even a pessimist. So it is a good balance and it's a um, very interesting aspect of Sagittarian energy. There's a very interesting dynamic at play between these two energies. And it is um, that Capricorn is the next stage of development in kind of the zodiac energy so if you think of the you know the birth chart and the 12 houses and the 12 signs each house is each sign is associated with a house and the themes of that house you know are linked to the energy of that particular sign that's more complicated than that i go over that in other videos but that's kind of the gist of it so sagittarius is associated with the ninth house which is the house of 
higher learning, higher ideals, philosophy, the kind of big picture outlook on life, even religion and religious beliefs, just anything that has to do with kind of explaining life and looking at um, kind of our cosmic experience from the big picture. So Capricorn is associated with the 10th house, which is the next stage in development, right? And the 10th house is associated with resources, kind of our overarching life path, not our day-to-day, -day, our daily job, necessarily what we do for money. The 10th house is more about our mission in life, what we feel our mission in life to be, right? Our life path could be the career if our career is, gotta, is, is fulfilling and is what we consider to be our, our life path or what we were put on the planet to do or to accomplish. And the 10th house is about harnessing those ideals, those philosophical ideals, and then using them in a practical sense because we're linked, uh, Capricorn is an energy linked to kind of material resources and practicality. So using those ideals that we explored in the ninth house in a practical sense to improve the world. So because it's the next stage of development, it, this, is an, this is a combination that even though the energies are very different, when this combination works, it works very well, okay? The, the issue is sometimes it takes a lot of effort for it to work because of the differences in energy, but it is a combination that can work very well, especially where the parent is the Capricorn, you have almost this kind of student teacher dynamic if the Sagittarian child is receptive to the parent. We're gonna talk in a bit about how you can help your child be more receptive to you when you're giving guidance to them. But I wanna point that out because that dynamic is, is very much at play here. When the Capricorn's the parent, you've got almost a student teacher dynamic going on. And as we say in astrology, Sagittarius is like the perpetual student. They love learning and they're always learning new things. So anything you can do to encourage your Sagittarian child to keep learning in areas they're interested in that will you know, help them not only feel more fulfilled in life, but also you know, when you introduce them to new subjects, that's obviously you know, a, helps to bond the parent and child because you're kind of playing on their natural abilities, right? To help them learn more about life, which will ultimately benefit them. An evolved Capricorn parent will know that it's about the experience and the parent-child dynamic is about teaching children, introducing them to things, guiding them, not dictating to them, not telling them what to do. And then when you introduce your Sag child to all these different things that life has to offer, all these different experiences, they will eventually, as they get older, choose what they like, discard what they don't like, what doesn't work for them, and kind of apply that zest for life and that optimism to those areas of life that they are truly passionate about. So we're going to, now we're going to talk about kind of three main areas which this dynamic plays out. One is that we've already kind of mentioned that when the parent is the Capricorn in the parent-child dynamic, there's always a tendency for the parent to exert a little too much control, okay? And Cap is in energy, like we said, that likes to have structure, it likes to have control over its environment, and sometimes that extends to the child. But we don't want to have or exhibit control over our kids. When they're younger, when they're little, you know, we may have to, especially when safety is involved. But as they get older, it's more about guiding kids. It's not about dictating to them or controlling them. And as we said, you know, Sag kids do not respond well when they perceive that they are being controlled. And this is tough for the Cap parent to kind of shed this, uh, this tendency a little bit because Cap, like Virgo, has perfectionist tendencies. And frankly, you know, they're usually right about stuff and they know they're right, right? But the thing is you have to understand your child doesn't have the life experience that you have yet and they're gonna make mistakes, but the lessons are gonna stick with them better if they learn through natural consequences, including when they make their own mistakes than if the parent criticizes them. And this is doubly true for Sagittarian kids because Sag is a very ind fiercely independent, freedom loving and stubborn sign. So for the cat parent, it can be frustrating for them to see the Sag child uh, struggling because, you know, it it's, pains us when we see our kids struggle. And it also can be frustrating to see them doing it wrong. But you're going to have to recognize that dynamic about yourself. And it's not about them doing it wrong. It's about them going through the process so that they experience stuff. So if you guide your kids instead of dictating to them and telling them what to do and mandating things to them, they're going to be way more receptive to take instruction from you. So you can say things like, hey, I see you, you're having trouble with that. I'm happy to help if you want. 
or I'm happy to share with you something I've used that helped me with that before, or, Hey, you know, I think your friend had an issue like that. And his mom told me that there was something that worked for him. I'm happy to share it with you. Or why don't you talk to your friend and see what worked for him and, um, see if maybe you want to do that. If you, if you interact with your sad child more along those lines, they're way more likely to take direction and guidance from you because you're guiding them and you're being helpful as opposed to telling them what to do or suggesting that they are doing something wrong. Kids are not going to do everything right. They just don't have the life experience that we have yet. But getting things perfect is not the point here. The point is going through the process of these activities so they learn how to do things so they are empowered and independent as adults. And along those lines, Sagittarian kids, all fire kids, uh, really don't respond well to parents who kind of helicopter and hover over them. Because as we said, it's a freedom loving sign. They like to do things on their own and you want to encourage them to do things on their own. Right. I read, uh, recently a lady who's like a big CEO or something that raised, uh, uh, these successful kids, however you define success. And she said she never did anything for her kids that they could do themselves. I think there's some truth in that like certainly you want to empower your kids and if you're doing everything for them all the time even things that they can do themselves you're disempowering them on the other hand it's fine to do nice stuff for your kids like if you're going upstairs and you get your kid a drink of water right i mean my son does nice things for me he doesn't say oh well, you can do that yourself mom i'm not going to do that for you so i think taking it to that extreme i think is too much it's like you know, your partner and you may do nice things for each other once in a while, especially if you're exhausted from the day and, you know, they're, you know, doing dinner or bringing you something to snack on or something like that. So it's not to say that you should never do nice things for your kids, but you should be, you know, thinking about if you're doing things for the, like things for them all the time that they are capable of doing for themselves. So you definitely want to empower them. And it's a tricky dynamic with Sagittarius because uh, it's, it's a sign ruled by Jupiter. There is almost always this tendency for, I don't want to call it laziness. I'll call it lack of initiative, maybe. So if you're doing stuff for your kid all the time, you're going to feed into that kind of lack of initiative, right? So you're going to have to remember that and always encourage them to do things for themselves and make sure they know that you are there to help them if they need. A simple, hey, do you need any help? happy to help if you need, right? Instead of let me do that for you because you, you're not doing it right. It's a very different message. The second big thing is, as we said, uh, Sagittarius is usually an uh, energy that tends to have an entourage about them. Now, I will say, uh, I've known plenty of Sagittarian sun people who test as introverts, okay? So that doesn't mean that a Sag person cannot be introverted. It is typically kind of an energy that seeks external stimulation in the purest sense of the energy. It is an energy that craves external stimulation, adventure, and just likes to roam wild and free. It doesn't like to be caged or pinned down in its purest form of the energy. Now, a lot of it depends on, you know, what the, what moon sign the chart holder has and what house the moon is in, what house the sun is in, what the personal planets, signs and houses of the personal planets. But that's Sag in like its purest expression of the energy, right? It's this untamed, kind of wild, exuberant, uh, freedom-loving energy that wants to experience life. So if you're a Capricorn person who is very introverted, now remember Cap is an, an energy that tends to be more introverted and reserved. Again, doesn't mean that they're not social, they don't like to be around people, but that's the tendency. You may be overwhelmed by your Sagittarius child's need for social contact, hanging with friends, external stimulation, that is okay if you're overwhelmed by that. Take breaks. You're going to have to give yourself breaks. Don't feel compelled to be on the go all the time. And as we say a lot on this channel, when your child is older, you can explain to them, look, you know, I have different needs from you. I, I need more rest and more alone time because I'm more introverted than you. And I just need to have a day in today, but tomorrow we can do X, Y, Z, whatever. That is perfectly okay to express your needs to your kids. You are not compelled to run yourself ragged to meet your child's uh, extroversion needs. Now, the last kind of big dynamic I wanna talk about, which we've already touched on, you're going to be frustrated by your Sagittarian's, Sagittarian child's impulsivity and what you perceive to be their lack of thinking, th 
things through before they act or before they make decisions. You're going to be irritated by it. Okay. There's no getting around that. Number one, just remember that is a normal expression of the energy. Second, as we've said already, kids learn best from natural consequences. The parent can tell them a million times, if you do that, this will happen. If you do that, this will happen, especially energy like Sag, they have to experience it themselves. And what do you know? It happened just like the parent said, but now they know. That may be frustrating to you, but it is not our job to always save our kids from their bad decisions or always save our kids from you know being disappointed. Obviously, there are extreme circumstances, you know, safety issues and stuff uh, where you're going to have to protect your kids. But in the normal course of life, they're going to make bad decisions. They're going to have consequences for bad decisions. And, you know, it's not our job to always save them from that. That's kind of the point of one of the points of life, learning those experiences, right? So Sagittarian kids with time and the maturity that comes with getting older and with more life experience, they eventually learn this stuff, right? They eventually learn about the consequences that will happen. And again, you can guide them. You can ask your child questions like, oh, you're contemplating that? Well, what do you think will happen if you do that? Or how do you think that's going to work out for you? Or that exact same thing happened to your friend so-and-so. What happened with that after, you know, how, after they did that action or made that decision, how did things work out for them? Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Or, or if, if that happens, how do you think you're going to handle that, right? How do you think you're going to handle the fallout from that? You could ask them guiding questions like that to get them to think about potential consequences ahead of time. But on the whole, you're going to have to accept that it is just a, a more impulsive, much more impulsive energy than Capricorn. And that is consistent with the nature of the sign. And remember, when your Sagittarian child comes to you and tells you about something bad they did, do not lose your stuff. Sometimes it may be hard, but if you remain calm and you, you know, deal with the issue, you listen to them and you ask them questions, you may ask them, well, what do you think we should do about this? Or do you need my help? Or do you just want to vent? Do you need me to get involved? Do you need me to talk to the teacher? You know, by responding along those lines, your Sagittarian child will come to learn that you are a safe, safe person, that they can share things with you, they can share anything with you, that you will remain calm, that you will not treat them badly, that you will not love them any less, very important, you will not love them any less because of the bad stuff that happened to them or the, you know, less than ideal decisions they made. You will not love them any less because of those things, that you will help them, that you will help them work through it, that you will remain calm, that you will be their rock, right? And they will eventually share more things with you. And eventually they will be asking you for advice on how to handle things, right? So that comes over a long period of time. That is not an overnight process. So day in, day out, these are the things you're going to have to do to remain connected to your Sagittarian child and also create that rock solid relationship where they take guidance and instruction from you and also know that they can come to you with any concerns. So that is what we had for you today. I have plenty of videos on uh, Sagittarian children, how to parent them. So you can check that out on my playlist. And the big announcement I have uh, is I have opened up my schedule again for astrology readings, including parent-child readings. These are typically about an hour in duration, but we can work with you if you need more help or less help, or if you have multiple kids you wanna talk about or um, sibling dynamics. So the link to book is down in the video description and I look forward to speaking with you guys and we'll be back next week. All right, take care.